we're really in the midst of a, of a revolution in robotics, both in the civilian world, um, and I think many of us see that in things like vacuum cleaners and cars, um, but also in the military world. They have a lot of different applications, from uh, reconnaissance to, to many of other things. What's difficult is that we use the word autonomy in three different ways. Um, we, we, they're just entirely different meanings of the word. One of them is about the complexity of the system that you mentioned. And so we talk about words like automatic or automated or autonomous to refer to sort of a spectrum of complexity. Uh, that's an important distinction. We also use words like semi-autonomous or supervised autonomous or fully autonomous to refer to the relationship of the person to the machine, how much the person has control to intervene. And that's a different, it's just a different meaning of the word entirely. And then the third area, which is really important, is the way in which uh, uh, the decisions are automated. So what is the decision being automated? So from a certain perspective, a toaster is autonomous. Right? You push the button in there, and it makes the toast, and then it pops up when it's done. Um, we have autonomous thermostats. A thermostat is basically autonomous. You set a temperature, and then it decides on its own. Um, those are very different decisions right, than decisions to drive on a highway where there are people in the way, and it's very risky, or decisions to use force in a weapon. Um, and even among decisions about weapons, there are many different types of decisions that go in to the decision to use force. So they're seeing a target and tracking it and identifying it and then deciding, yep, we're going to blow that up. And then there's the you know, maneuvering into the target and actually detonating. So it's very important to think about what is the decision we're talking about um, to be more specific in our terminology. And I think the idea that you can um, replace something a person's doing with a machine is probably not the right way to think about the problem because humans and machines think very differently. Things that are very easy for us are very, very hard for machines and vice versa. Um, what is probably realistic is to think that as you have smaller militaries, that um, it's possible to use more robotic systems to improve the capabilities of those smaller um, smaller systems and smaller units. The drones today that you see in the news, the Predator and Reaper, are not autonomous at all. Uh, they have a person actually flying with, with a remote control, not even like a keyboard and a mouse, where they sit, uh, Air Force pilots sit in cockpits and they actually wear flight suits and they have a, a controller just like they would in an airplane to fly those. Um, the technology is in fact more advanced than that today. Um, right now that's because those systems were built and designed a couple years ago. Um, you can go online and you can buy a fully autonomous GPS programmable drone for about $1,000 online uh, where you punch in the GPS coordinates and it will fly on its own. Um, so there will be abilities to be more autonomous, but the ones that we think of in sort of the popular imagination are not autonomous at all. And certainly when it comes to weapons use, uh, there's no autonomous feature. Sometimes people think that the, the predator finds a target on its own. It's, it's not capable of that. It has no idea what a target is, it doesn't, it's just, it's just a video camera. Um, so it has no more ability to, in fact, your smartphone is smarter uh, because your smartphone can look at a picture and can identify a person. And it does the automated sort of focusing on people's faces. Or if you upload something to, to Google or Facebook, it says, oh, it might even identify the person. Uh, the cameras on the Predators and Reapers are not that good. But I think it's important to think about where this is going, not just from the perspective of civilian casualties, but also uh, strategic stability. Um, so the concern about an arms race uh, with other nations is something that I think all nations should be very concerned about, and we need to work through those issues.